London. Hi, hello England. This is Shihan Saini, Director, Coaches Committee, Archery Association of India. Your mind coach. You are watching the 14th lecture on the mental training series in archery. Om, Om, Om. Olympic medal, Olympic medal, nothing but the Olympic medal. Welcome to Discover the Mind Coach in You. Namaste, Namaskar. Welcome to Aap Hai Next to Dronacharya. Man Ka Dronacharya. Chalo, Tirandaz Mein Olympic Gold Laayenge. Olympic Gold. Zarur Laayenge. Chalo. It's very important in archery to understand, remember, maintain and replicate energy levels to have consistency in shots. This can mean a world of difference in creating a world-class archer. We will, from this amazing city called London, right in front of the tower, discuss with you the importance of managing energy levels. In this lecture, we will talk to you in three parts. One, avoiding drains on energy in shooting. Two, keeping track of your energy levels in the archery field. And three, using your energy levels to your advantage in archery. If you want to reach your archery potential, you have to learn what all professional archers already know. How to manage your physical and mental energy levels during competition. You have only a finite amount of energy. So you need to know when to conserve it and when to expend it. It's pivotal for reaching the pinnacle. Managing the link between your mind and your physical body is the key to consistently competing at the highest level. You won't always be on top of archery rankings in every competition. Some days you won't feel your best and your available energy will be lower than usual. On these days you have to manage your physical output more carefully than you would normally. Other days you'll feel terrific and your available energy will be really high. You'll have to more wiggle room when it comes to your energy output, but you'll still want to maximize your use of energy. The key to learning how to manage your energy levels is to eliminate guesswork. The better able you are to quantify your energy levels and the amount of physical and mental energy you're using during competition, the more likely you'll be to track and adjust your energy output to your advantage. We will start this lecture by giving you a roadmap of all the pitfalls you want to avoid. All the things that drain your energy. When you eliminate the negative, you can focus on the positive. The ways to maximize your energy during competition so you get the results you want. After we outline common drains on energy, we show you how to track your energy levels and explain why tracking is important. Then we fill you in how you, how to manage your energy levels during competition. We will end this lecture by telling you how to pump yourself up and at the same time, stay relaxed during competition. Energy management isn't about bouncing off the walls like a kid who has too much candy. It's about using energy effectively which includes staying relaxed so that your energy isn't being wasted. A more recent advancement in sports psychology has been in the field of biofeedback and neurofeedback. Even though biofeedback and neurofeedback tools and approaches have been used for many, many years, their popularity started growing back in the 1960s. Biofeedback focuses more on bodily responses such as heart rate and breathing patterns. The neurofeedback places its attention more on brain wave patterns. These tools are often used together and have the same ultimate goal, to help people be able to be more aware of and control their mental, physical and emotional internal responses. The use of biofeedback and neurofeedback has grown in the last couple of decades in many areas, especially with archers trying to find their zone and other ideal states of arousal. These approaches have also been helpful in creating various medical conditions such as attention deficient hyperactivity disorder, ADHD, reducing blood pressure, treating migraine headaches, 
and improving recovery time from injury. In the most recent Tokyo Olympics, Canada's own the podium rallying cry and program included using both biofeedback and neurofeedback technology to help the athletes mentally prepare for competition. Numerous professional and Olympic archers are using this technology. The basic goal of biofeedback and neurofeedback training is to help archers achieve their optimum level of arousal for the wide variety of situations they'll encounter during archery competition. In other words, to achieve peak performance states and gain more frequent control of and access to the zone, biofeedback and neurofeedback are also measurable means of helping archers keep their physical energy levels where they want them to be. They're excellent tools for archers to become more aware of and control their own stress responses to pressure-filled situations. Archers can use these tools to help remain more centered and calm when the pressure is on, such as when a soccer player has to make a free kick in the penalty box to win the game, or when a relief pitcher comes in the late innings with the bases loaded trying to end the innings. Hook me up. Here how it works. Archers have electrodes attached to the heads to measure and monitor the brain wave activity. This information is fed to a computer for tracking. As this is taking place, the archer begins to learn to control her, his brain activity, focus, concentration and physiological responses to what she or he is seeing. Say for example on a video game in front of her or him. In order for the archer to win the video game, he or she has to learn to control her, his or her breathing and heart rate and remain calmly focused on the objective of the game. Another example involves having electrodes attached to that measure skin temperature and heart rate while the archer is watching in the monitor in front of her or him. The archer learns to slow her or his heart rate down and see the visual graph and audible sounds slow down before his or her eyes. As he or she practices this type of training, she or he becomes measurably better at being more aware of his or her physical and emotional responses and then being able to keep them where she or he wants them to be, regardless of the external circumstances in which she or he finds himself. More and more sports psychologists are seeking training in this emerging field. Keep in mind that biofeedback and neurofeedback, like other techniques, are not a quick fix or a one-time visit shot of solution. Depending on your current abilities to manage your energy and arousal levels, they may require many sessions to help. But they are a great resource for archers wanting to learn to control the anxiety and the energy levels and try to achieve the ideal mental and emotional states more consistent. First, let's check about eliminating energy wasters. When you're driving, your car gets better gas mileage when your tires are properly filled with air and you drive on a smooth, freshly paved highway rather than a pothole filled one. The same basic principle applies to energy management. If you take care of yourself and avoid the potholes or pitfalls on the road of competition, you won't use as much energy and you can devote that energy to your archery performance. At an archery event, you have to regulate your energy levels and make sure you always have a maximum amount of energy available. You never know when the weather conditions are going to drain your energy. Maybe the match will be delayed for some reason or the other and you'll have to wait to get back on the shooting line. Or maybe the match will go into a shoot-off. You need to make sure you're storing up your energy so it's available when you need it. In this regards, we, we like to outline three key ways that archers waste energy so you can avoid doing these things yourself. Number one, negative self-talk. Negative self-talk is one of the more common ways that competitive archers waste energy. Too often, fleeting moments of negativity turn into longer periods of negativity. Left unchecked, negative thinking can extend throughout an entire competition or tournament. Think about that. In an archery tournament, that could mean well over two hours of relentless negativity. You may be calm on the outside, but if you're thinking negatively on the inside, your energy is being depleted. 
negative thoughts result in negative feelings and emotions which drain your energy so thoughts such as i'll never win today causes you to feel hopeless and what if i get down my co- if i let down my coach creates anxiety and worry these negative emotions are a tremendous drain on your physical energy if you notice that you're starting to engage in negative self talk work to turn that around immediately number 2 emotional excess the problem with getting too emotional is that it affects your behavior the more emotional you get the more energy you'll expend and the more quickly you'll tire out which will affect your performance any time you get too emotional even the emotions are positive you drain energy the goal is to keep your emotions in check and within an effective range you need to be emotional enough but not too emotional you really cannot have too much of a good thing samaj is so excited the night before a competition that they don't sleep well and deplete energy because of their amped up anticipation if you're overly emotional and these emotions are positive ones you can calm yourself in different ways for example you can use self talk or try some strategies for managing pressure you can use a journal to record your thoughts or you can spend some time meditating quietly simple breathing and stretching are an effective way to calm yourself most of the time getting too emotional involves negative emotions such as anger frustration fear worry or resentment every time you let your negative emotions go too far you are draining energy energy that you may need later in the game or even the next day even the best archers in the world make mistakes every single time they step out on the field or shooting range the mistakes you make as an archer are not nearly as relevant as what you do with your mistakes allowing your emotions to get out of control will ultimately destroy you it will hurt your own performance and may even cause you to let down your state tamil nadu or country india we always teach our archers to embrace and accept feelings even negative ones such as worry or fear when you can accept that you're worried or scared you won't experience the tension that comes from trying to fight all these emotions you simply experience them and move on lack of preparation if you aren't prepared for competition you'll find that you expend far more energy than you would have otherwise lack of preparation drains more energy than you may think when you are fully and completely prepared you feel confident excited and are ready to go on the other hand when you haven't prepared adequately there is a subtle yet constant energy drain that results from a nagging worry about how you will perform your confidence is lower and your worry and anxiety are higher worry is like a dripping faucet it may not feel like much but over time it adds up instead of worrying about your lack of preparation spend more of your energy just preparing you'll build up the energy reserves you need to succeed to be prepared you have to recognize your strengths and weaknesses you can maximize your preparation by assessing and evaluating yourself in the following areas at least once a week if you are preparing when well in well in all these realms you'll be ready to perform number 1 physical physical preparation includes being fit getting enough to sleep eating a healthy diet getting enough water and being properly conditioned number 2 skill skill preparation includes paying attention to technique and your execution of the archery skills needed in your sport number 3 strategy preparing strategically includes planning having a game plan and knowing your role in the archery team next is mental mental preparation includes using imagery and positive affirmations next is personal personal preparation is everything outside of archery making sure you've done your school work or college work met your work obligations address any issues in your personal relationships and so on prior to competing rate your energy levels in a journal note your energy levels on a scale of 1 to 5 and include any notes you want to make about diet preparation health and so on 
Managing energy levels in the hours before a competition is very, very important. Many archers get too excited and drain the energy levels needlessly just before they compete. You want to peak on the field, not in the locker room. You can improve your pre-competition energy management with proper and effective routines during competition. During most competitions, you won't be able to pull out your notebook and journal and note your energy levels, at least not without getting a penalty. Managing your energy levels. With the information you gain in tracking your energy levels, you can start managing your energy. That puts you in control of the energy reserve you draw upon in practice and in competition, which is a key to your success. We will now fill you in on specific strategies for managing your energy, starting with identifying your ideal competition state. Identifying your ideal competitive state. An important part of managing your energy level is knowing how much energy you need to compete at your best. To improve your awareness of your ideal competitive state, use as many of the following methods as possible. One, written journals or notebooks. Many uh, diaries, many top archers use diaries or journals in competition to note important details that they want to track. And energy is one of those. You can do the same and it doesn't have to be scientific. Simply write down how you felt during competition. You can answer such questions as, how prepared did I feel physically? Or how did I, my body feel? The next is written charting. Written charting is simply using number scales to track your energy level. You can create a simple chart and use that as your daily assessment tool, adjusting it as needed. Next is video tracking. Video doesn't lie. You can use videos of yourself competing to analyze how strong you look physically, how tired you look during crucial moments, and so on. One way to get more in tune with your ideal energy level is to think back to times when your energy was at its best. Take some time to write in your journal about three to five competitions where your energy levels were, where you'd like them to be. Be as specific as possible. Think and write about what made these energy levels possible. Your sleep habits, your diet, your mental preparation, solid routines. You can use these experiences as a baseline for what you are trying to achieve. If you want to learn about ideal energy levels, great archers. Many archers have blogs and websites or, or Facebook pages where they talk about how they train and perform. Take advantage of this information and apply it to your own life. You don't have to emulate a high-profile archer. You can run, learn from any national archer of your own country who posts on Facebook, Insta, or, uh, or Twitter regularly. Find out what successful archers are doing to achieve optimal energy levels and bring what you learn into your own training and performances. Pumping yourselves up. Energy management has two important aspects. The ability to pump yourself up and the ability to relax. When you know how to do both, you'll be able to adjust to any situation. With the energy you need, now we will give you strategies for pumping yourself up. Listening to music to get psyched. Almost every archer has at some time used music as a way to get ready for a big game or competition. Music is a powerful tool to enhance emotions and you can use it to your advantage. Here are some tips for using music to get pumped up for competition. Personalize your music choices. What motivates others may not motivate you. So make sure you pick music and gets you what gets you going and your heart rate up. Keep in mind that music doesn't have to be loud and obnoxious to motivate. I have worked with my top archers who get pumped up to country music or A.R. Rahman songs. The key is to know what motivates you. Keep a library of potentially motivating music choices on hand so that you can pick and choose on any given day. Having a diverse collection of songs that motivates you will allow you greater flexibility in your pre-performance routine. Getting your heart rate up, the most important indications of being pumped up and ready to do battle in the archery field, a heart rate and sweat levels. Some people naturally sweat more than others. So the easier of the two is to gorge your heart rate. Increased heart rate means that you're pumping blood through your body faster 
and your muscles have more oxygen available to them, thus increasing the responsiveness. Your body is ready to go, ready to do what it's been trained to do. There are numerous ways to get your heart rate up. Here are a few. One, breathing. Pick up the tempo of your breathing and your heart rate will increase. Be sure your breathing is in control. You don't want to hyperventilate. But get it going and see how your energy rises as well. Using high energy images and verbal cues. Certain images and verbal cues can help to raise intensity and energy. For example, think of a speeding train, a jaguar stalking and pouncing on its prey. The best archer in your sport performing or one of your own best performances from the past. Phrases like, hey, come on, get it done. Just do it. Or no pain, no gain. Come on, come on, go, 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 go. Can do the same. Find the words and images that work for you. There are no right or wrong images or cues. Just effective and ineffective ones. Use the environment around you. Many archers feed off the excitement of the crowd and the fact that they're being observed by others. If you've ever had the opportunity to play in front of a large audience of cheering fans or, or talking to a big audience, you'll know that it is a serious rush of adrenaline and can get your energy up. If you're having difficulty energizing yourself, go out onto the field in front of fans and spectators. They can help you get your mojo back. Picking up the tempo. Pick up the pace of your pre-performance warm-up routine. Shoot some arrows in short distance or treat your warm-up more like circuit training and move quickly from one activity to other. Sprint up and down to get your heart rate up. Watching motivational movies. Numerous sports and non-sport related movies can get you pumped up the day or night before a competition. Watch a movie that gets you amped up to compete. Next is competitive relaxation. Relaxation while kicking butt, in addition to knowing how to pump yourself up, you need to learn the art of relaxation. Just as you need to know how to amp yourself up for the rigors of competition, you also need to know how to calm yourself down in the heat of the battle. Now let me offer several methods and tips for relaxation. Use your whichever approaches work best for you and your situation. Breathing deeply. Breathing is the gateway to relaxation. It can also enhance performance by increasing oxygen levels in your blood, thereby making more energy available in your muscles. When you start feeling stressed out as an archer, your breathing becomes more shallow and rapid. Some archers even hold their breath for long periods. Shallow breathing and holding your breath cause increased muscle tension. An increased muscle tension decreases performance. So learning the art of deep breathing is critical. Breathing deeply in a controlled manner is a central aspect to all physical relaxation exercises. The key is to make it deliberate. Take about 30 seconds during a set or before a match to take three slow deep breaths. You know you're breathing correctly if you feel your lower abdomen fill first, like a balloon filling with air and then your chest. Take at least twice as long to expel the air as you did to inhale it. Make an audible exhalation <sighs> sound, which can serve as a signal for tension leaving the body. These three breaths will relax you physically as well as focus your mind for competition. Make deliberate breathing a part of your everyday performance and routine. Successful archers make deep breathing as automatic as taking a shower or eating. They don't even think about it. They do this automatically because it helps them relax the muscles, calm themselves and be able to maximize their archery shot sequence. Golfers take deep breath as a part of the pre-shot routines and tennis players do so before serving. In the short term, these breaths relax the muscles and allow for optimal muscle movement. In the long term, they allow archers to conserve energy for the entire competition or tournament. Reducing muscle tension. Reducing muscle tension improves performance no matter what sport you're participating in. A nervous mind can reside within a physically relaxed body and one of the most effective ways to make sure you have a physically relaxed body is to use a technique called progressive muscle relaxation or PMR. 
engaging in a progressive deliberate series of contractions and then relaxations of the major muscle groups of the body will reduce the amount of muscle tension present. These exercises teach you how to better recognize the levels of tension that are present in your body at any given moment. If you can recognize tension in your muscles before the tension builds up to harmful levels, you'll improve your ability to compete to the best of your natural ability. It's that simple to engage in progressive muscle relaxation. You need to set aside five to 10 minutes. You can do so seated or lying down. This technique is very simple. Start at the head and successfully contract each major muscle group at three levels for approximately five seconds each. 100% contraction. At 100% contract, the muscle groups as hard and as tightly as possible. A good way to evaluate if you're doing so is to notice if your muscles are shaking. If they are, you are 100% in contraction. 50% contraction. The 50% uh, contraction level is a bit harder to recognize. But if you want to cut your muscle tension level in half, now 0% contraction. Breathe out loudly. <sighs> when you reach the 0% level, and imagine that all the tension is leaving your body at that moment, that's 0%. There are some suggestions for how to contract each of the muscles. First is the trapezius or the traps, the muscles that make your shoulders shrug like that. Try to touch your shoulders to your ears and hold them there in the contracted position. Biceps, pretend that you're flexing for a magazine picture or they're showing off for your girlfriend or her boyfriend. Triceps, straighten your arms out in front of you, turning the outside of your hands inward towards each other. Pectorals, chest muscles. Imagine yourself flexing for a magazine again, picture. Or cross one arm over the other, like that, in front of you forming an X. Abdominals, stomach muscles. Imagine flexing your stomach as if a girlfriend were about to playfully punch you in your stomach. Clinch it. Gluteus, butt muscles. <laughs> this is funny. Uh, imagine trying to hold a one rupee coin between your butt and, and you know, you know uh, your butt cheeks. Next is quadriceps, the muscles at the front of your thighs. Straighten your legs and squeeze. Hamstring, the muscle at the back of your thighs. When seated, dig your heels into the ground and hold it. Calves, when you are seated on your tippy toes, that's hold that position. When lying down, point your toes forward away from you or directly up towards your head. Fists, imagine trying to crack a, a walnut in your palm, like that. Then progressive muscle relaxation is one of the best ways to treat a clinical condition called panic disorder, which is a disorder in which an individual suffers debilitating panic attacks. If it can help reduce panic attacks, it can definitely help you relax and perform better as an archer. In addition to using progressive muscle relaxation, you can use the following to relax your muscles. One is imagery. Archers can reduce muscle tension and enter a more relaxed state through imagery. Archers can visualize warm water running over muscles to see them relaxed or the muscles looking like cooked spaghetti, noodles or limp rubber bands. Next is music. Some types of music uh, is, help, uh, is used to get athletes pumped for competition. But other types of music like soft jazz can relax you. Keywords. Make sure you have certain cue words available for when you find yourself in a state of tension. Repeat words or phrases such as relax, 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 or slow and easy. Uh, quieting your mind. We live in a day or an age where information is constantly bombarding us. It's so difficult to quiet the mind at any time during the day or night, not just during competition. In fact, one of the greatest problems in India is the loss of sleep due to anxiety caused by a racing mind, a mind full of worry and negative thoughts. I have an answer who keeps on thinking too much. Sleep challenges can lead to physical problems, decrease concentration, increase anxiety and depression, as well as lowered performance in archers. School, work or relationships, a good technique for quieting your mind and for getting out of the emotional roller coaster is to use a cue word such as relax, breathe. You'll be able to use this technique during breaks in the action of at least three or five minutes or more. Slowly repeat the cue word while exhaling. <sighs> Relax. You can do it as many times as necessary, but the key is to focus only on the cue word. 
when you feel centered, you can return to composition, ready to shoot anew. Quieting your mind is simply stated, but not that easily done. It takes practice, just like any other skill. It's worth doing not only for your sport performance, but also for your life. In addition to using a Q word during composition, you can quiet your mind by meditating off the playing field. Meditation has been used to train and calm the mind for over 3,000 years. It's been proven to be helpful in increasing alertness, increasing energy and productivity, decreasing self-criticism and improving self-esteem. Meditation is useful for athletes because when your mind is quiet and centered, you can focus only in the task in front of you. Too many archers make mistakes because they aren't focused on one thing. They're not in the present moment. If you think about your best archery shots, they were probably ones in which you were focused on the task in front of you and you were in the present. Improved focus is one of the primary benefits of meditation and more and more high level archers are making it part of the normal practice and training routine for this very reason. Here are some important tips for uh, using meditation. Going into it with the right attitude. You have to be open to the idea of meditation in order for it to work. If you see meditation as a waste of your time, of your time there's no point in doing it. Recognize that meditation requires commitment and self-discipline. Learning to keep your mind free of extraneous thoughts is a skill like any other. If you want to improve your endurance, running once a month isn't going to do it. In the same way, you need to practice meditation regularly, making it part of your routine. Set up the right environment. Look for some quiet place like the Tower Bridge in London where you won't be interrupted. Here, I'm not talking, nobody's interrupting me. Set aside 15 to 20 minutes per session. Stick with it. At first, you may find it difficult and want to give it up. Thinking that isn't working, but meditation takes time and the more you practice it, the better you get. Meditation is a huge subject. One can't possibly cover completely in this lecture. Relaxing in a hurry sometimes during competition. How to relax? You need quicker ways to calm yourself down. A good way to do this is to use humor, jokes. Why humor? Because humor helps change your emotional state from angry or frustrated to happy in an instant. Here are some ways to use humor to change your mood and relax in a hurry. Talk to yourself in a high radical. Hello, Hussaini! In a radical voice, for example, you can say, You can do it! In a high-pitched voice. Use a gesture to break the tension, like that, you know. A, a, a mind coach once uh, uh, taught a high-level tennis player to stop, drop and roll when she found herself getting angry on the tennis court. She used this technique during a particularly intense match and was laughing at herself before she got up off the ground and the whole, whole uh, audience was laughing. Sing the lyrics to funny songs, for example, saying something like, I'm a little deep pot, short and stout. This will detect you from your frustration. Joke around with teammates. Just joking with teammates puts things in perspective. The key is to personalize it. But the funnier, the better. You can't experience two emotions simultaneously. You can't be angry and happy at the same time. You can't feel frustrated and happy at the same time either. This is why using humor is such a powerful and quick tool for changing your mood. Here are some more ways to relax in a hurry. Stop and slow down. When you're able, simply stop and take a deep breath to gain perspective. It only takes a few seconds to stop the world from spinning. You just have to remember to do it. Remember, you have the ability to stop the racing in your body and mind. Stop it before it gets going. If you notice that you've become too excited, intervene immediately. Don't wait. The higher the energy level goes, the longer it takes to calm down. Think of a speeding car. It takes a little longer for a Ferrari to slow down when it's going 120 miles per hour than it does when it's going at 40 miles per hour. Use imagery. Create a picture in your mind with a vertical line going from 1 to 10. At 10, your energy level is very high. At 1, it's very low. Picture where you want your energy level to be. If you need to calm down in a hurry, simply see the bar falling down quickly to the level you want. If you pre prefer, you can think about the mercury rising and falling. Well, so much so for the importance of managing energy levels. Right from London, Tower Bridge, 
more to come on the mind about the mind the olympic gold in archery nothing but the olympic gold manage your energy levels the job starts today your job starts right now till i provoke your mind again it's a bye from me jai hind om 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 olympic medal olympic medal nothing but the olympic gold who bye bye